Hi guys, Mike here from Com3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. As you may have noticed, for the last couple of weeks I've been pretty quiet and there is a good reason for that. I've been extremely busy and I do plan on putting a video out outlining a bit of the work that I've been doing just to show you that I'm not just sitting on my ass and doing absolutely nothing. But today, what I thought I'd do, I thought I'd go back to how I actually started Comp3 Interactive, which was on Instagram and Facebook, I used to just put little hints and tips. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through 10 of the best hints and tips that I think will help you and help your workflow. And if there's even just one of these that you've never heard of before, please drop a like down below, it really helps me out. But before we get started, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter. Go check out his website. Keep up to date with what he's doing. And I just want to thank everybody supporting us over on Patreon. You guys are fantastic. We've actually just started uploading quite frequently behind the scenes pictures and videos and a little bit of information and lore about the upcoming game. Now, you're not going to see any of that anywhere else, so if you're interested in that, please consider going over and supporting us. All right, so these are going to be in no particular order, and the first one is going to be the debug.log second parameter. So we just take a look at this script. I've got a cube script. We get a random speed. We move upwards that speed, and if we go above 30, we put out a debug log. Now, first of all, if we didn't have a second parameter and we were to play this game, we'll see the cube start raising up at random speeds. And then once one of them hits 30 meters high, we get the debug log. But that doesn't tell us anything. We can click that and it just loads up where this is. If we add in that second parameter of game object, so the actual game object itself that this script is attached to, head back over and replay, this time, Everything goes up as we expect. As soon as one hits 30, we see we can click this now, and the hierarchy highlights the object that this debug log is coming from. Perfect for finding out an individual object that's causing you problems. Next, did you know that Text Mesh Pro elements actually support rich text formatting? Now, if you're familiar with rich text formatting, you'll know exactly what I mean by this, but essentially, sort of like HTML commands, Inside of the string on the right hand side over here in the inspector, we can add in different commands. So such as angled bracket, size equals 300, close that. And then after the 30, we'll just do angle bracket slash size to close it off after that. And it's not only the size you can do, you can do color. We'll do color equals red and then cap off that color again, just to add a little bit more dynamic feel to your elements. And you can even do this via script by using the same tags. If we hop back over to Unity, we see we have nothing in our text element at the moment. Play the game, and there we go. My name is Mike, welcome. And just as a final little tip on this one for you, you can even make your own functions. For example, this one takes in the font size as a float, the color as a string, and the actual string value, and then we can collate all of that information into one string, which will be returned for the format. If we play that, we'll see this time we have a green font. Next, just like the Text Mesh Pro rich text formatter, the debugger also supports rich text formatting. So as you can see here, we have two debug logs, one with a color red, one with a color green. Usually these are the only two that I use, maybe an orange every now and again, but usually if something's gone wrong, it's red. If something goes right, it's green. If we play this, we'll just see we get two messages down in our bottom left. And I'm sure you can think of different ways to use that to your advantage. Next, I'm gonna show you how to use string interpolation. So if we take a look at what we have here, this is the most common way of actually concatenating a lot of different strings and variables into one. So as you can see, we have a string and then in the middle of it all, we've got a variable. So we've got a username, which is Mike, a score, which is 100, and then lives remaining is three. And that works perfectly fine. If we play the game, we now have, hello, Mike, you have a score of 100 and three lives remaining. But the problem is this is a pain to actually write out and then it's even worse to read through. Fortunately, there is a better way of doing this. So if we just copy that out, what we can do, if we put a dollar sign 
followed by a speech marks, that's how we actually indicate that this string is going to contain variables. So now we can write out the same string, but instead of ending our string plus variable name plus more strings, what we can do, we can use our curly brackets and put variables inside of the string itself. So we can remove our old one, save, jump back over into Unity, and now that works exactly the same as it did before, but it's a lot easier to read. Another really useful debug tip to note is how to use debug.break. So we take a look at our script here, similar to the first one that I showed you, we have a cube that's going to move up by 5 units a second, but then it's also going to move left by 10 units a second, speed times 2. And what I want, I want to know the exact position this game object's on, on the x-axis, at the point that my cube is actually 15 units high. Now obviously this is just an example, but I'm sure you can think of your own examples where this would come in useful. So I've just popped in a quick if statement. If my y is greater than 15, I'm going to debug log the x position, and then I'm going to break. And what break's going to do is it's going to pause the game for us in the editor automatically. We run this, we see our cube shoots off into the distance, the game automatically pauses, and it gives me the x value which I wanted. Perfect. Now that's really useful when you actually want to interrogate data on a specific frame. Another thing that a lot of people don't realise that you can actually do is mathematical functions inside of numeric input fields, which is particularly useful if you crap at maths like I am. So for example, we can see we have this image, it's got a width of 37.65 pixels and we want to double that. Now we can work this out, you may already even know this if you're uh, better than me with maths, but what we can do is we can just multiply that value by 2, press enter, and there we have it. 75.3. Another really simple one that I use in pretty much every one of my projects is making sure that I can actually order my assets folder. Now the assets folder is obviously in alphabetical order, but what if we have a folder called utilities? It's going to get pushed down towards the bottom, but it's actually quite a useful folder and we're going to be using that quite a bit. So the way that I like to do this we can rename this folder, just put an underscore at the beginning of it. Special characters take priority over alpha and numeric characters, so you'll always have your utilities folder on the top ready to go. One extremely good tip for beginners is the fact that you can actually open up the Unity documentation on the website from the inspector. So if we take a look here, on my character controller, I have the character controller component. And if I want to know about that, you can go and Google it. Or this icon here the little question mark in a circle, if we click that, all that's going to do, that's going to take us straight to that page of the documentation online. The next tip is to just do with cleaning up your scripts. You can actually use things called regions, which allow you to collapse and expand different sections of your code. So what we can do, above our variables, we can put a hash, type in region, and then give it a name. We'll call that variables. And then underneath our variables, we'll type in end region. What that's going to let us do is that's going to let us completely collapse our variables just into this variables label here. And we can have as many of these as we want. So we can also have one for public methods, and then we'll end that, and so on. We could do one for privates, one for reserved. And as you can see, I've got one here for one of my camera controllers. I have all the variables hidden all the built-in functional methods, and then my own custom methods, which are then split into private and public. And the final quick tip I've got for you today, you can actually display private fields inside the inspector as read-only without any special attributes or even changing your code. So we take a look here. I've got a public float score, which is 200. I've got a private float high score, which is 3,000. We pop over into the inspector, we can see on our script we have the score of 200, but we can't see high score. So if we just pop over and click these three dots in the top right of our inspector window and select debug mode, we can see a whole host of additional information, including any private variables. So there we have it, 10 random tips for Unity that I think 
are quite useful. If you thought they were useful and you want more videos like this, let me know in the comments below. And if you've got any of your own tips as well, drop them down there as well. And again, I'm sorry for being a little bit quiet the last few weeks. I'm definitely going to try and get some more stuff out there. So with that, I'll see you again next week, hopefully. Thanks for watching guys. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.